Good evening. Uh, this is another episode of Veterans of Politics. I am Jim Jonas, along with uh, Stephanie Phillips. Uh, Steve's out ill, so uh, Stephanie is uh, filling in, and thank you very much for filling in while I was out, too. Anytime. During the primary, so I appreciate that, Stephanie. No problem. Uh, I'm really excited about... I'm excited for the guest we have on. I'm not exactly excited the reason why he has to be on to do this, but he's going to he's going to explain it because one of the things that absolutely drives me nuts, no matter who you cast your vote for, is voter integrity. And if you cannot trust our system in order to know that these elections are fair and are handled properly, then where are we as a country? So, Joey, I want to thank you very much for coming on. Absolutely. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Just so people know uh, that uh, don't know, uh, Joey uh, is running for uh, governor of the state of Nevada, and he has not conceded to uh, Joe Lombardo, and he's going to explain why not and some of the stuff they're doing to try to uh, fix this uh, injustice that's uh, happening right now in our state. So, Joey, if you would like to uh, start, give a little background about yourself, just for people who don't know who you are. Yeah, sure. You know, first of all, I want to say thanks for having me, and um, I hope Steve's all right. I was going to obviously make fun of him and, and take some shots at him, but I'm glad you guys I'm told sure me not to do that. So tell him. So I was going to say some things you might not have thought were as funny, and you know, it reminds me when my mom used to tell me, I'd, I'd say stuff that I thought was funny, and my sisters would cry, and then my mom would say, son. If it was funny, your sisters would be laughing with you. Right. So I learned that the old way. So Steve, love you. Hope you get better. I'm not going to pick on you. I don't know anything that's going on, but thank you for all the support. And yeah, it's great to be down here. Um, I came down. Uh, I'd expected to actually be down uh, a couple of days after the election. Uh, things didn't, you know, um, things weren't announced uh, properly. And, and that's how I'll say it. And it's very simple for folks that don't know anything about me. I'm Joey Gilbert. I'm a, I'm a businessman and attorney from the Reno area. Um, I was a three-time national champ, four-time All-American up at the University of Nevada, Reno as a boxer. Um, you know, uh, graduated, went to law school in San Diego, moved to Vegas, actually won the Golden Gloves down here in 2000, turned professional, had a professional career, uh, was 21 and three with 17 knockouts of the WBO NABO belt, the WBC USNBC belt. It was ranked number three in the world by the WBC and number seven, uh, number three by the WBO and number seven by the WBC. I only say that because I'm very proud of the fact that I, I was a high level uh, prize fighter. Greatest time of my life. Yeah. That also got me on the show. The contender with Sylvester Stallone, which is where, where people remember me from. Yeah. But uh, more than more than that, I'm a father. My, my daughter, who many of you have met, is 12 years old. She's the absolute love of my life. She is uh, just so fantastic. We have so much fun together. And so I'm a father, businessman, uh, lawyer, and entrepreneur. And in March 2020, when our uh, completely incompetent and absolutely reckless, you know, demented governor started doing what he was doing, shutting down our state, uh, sending our kids home from school, uh, closing our businesses, closing our churches, forcing people to wear masks, forcing them to get tested, forcing them to then even get the the Fauci ouchie, and I say that so we don't get censored anywhere. Mm -hmm. But when that happened, I felt like, you know, yeah, there's a pandemic in the state right now. It's a pandemic of leadership, a failed leadership. And so it really was, and I, and I say this, I'm actually prefacing this on, on purpose because uh, we're here today under circumstances that you said you wish we weren't here under, but I'll share with you that even had we won or had we been announced the winner, we'd be in the same situation. And, I, and I'll get to why that is. But, um, you know, backing up. So the governor pulled this nonsense. I felt like no one was standing up to fight for the people. Here are all these elected representatives. Here are these public servants and no one's saying a word. Meanwhile, there's some of us that, you know, can, you know, Google or, or use anything. I really people always say to me, Joey, how did you learn about hydroxychloroquine to sue the government? I Googled it. I actually Googled coronavirus treatment, South Korea. The first thing it shot out. So I wasn't some brain surgeon. I just was someone that wanted to be active, provide leadership. And as I've said many times, uh, leadership, is, leadership is action, not a position. So I just started acting. And so filed lawsuits to get access to early treatment medication, filed lawsuits to open the churches. And despite what the, all the naysayers say, yes, we did win. Seagal, Chad, and I, we have an order signed from the judge of the Ninth Circuit. Believe it or not, three Trump judges, 10 yeah. days before Christmas, uh, December 2020, opened all Nevada churches. 
Well, why I'm giving you this, some kind of this chronological stuff is we had churches, then we had the kids in the mass, then we had the vaccine mandate. And we fought all these things because it was the right thing to do. And they put hydroxychloroquine back online. They did. So we won. Uh, well, it wasn't necessarily that we won a lawsuit, but what we did is we prevented the governor from being able to extend his illegal, unconstitutional emergency regulation banning right. hydroxychloroquine. So that, that did happen. Hydroxychloroquine became available in Nevada July 23rd, 2020. But they worked so hard to suppress it, keep that monoclonal antibodies, other early treatment away from Nevadans to keep the fear up, right. to keep people scared. Yep. <clears throat> but there are a few of us that stepped up. And so we fought those cases. Um, the, the mass case, believe it or not, is still on its way on its appeal to the Ninth Circuit. So they, that was just done. Uh, I don't know when it will be. You know, Seagal was just telling me her luck. It'll be, you know, October. She'll have to argue the, wow. the case before the election. But so I say this stuff because this was like the, the reason that got me in the fight was when the church uh, lawsuit went through, the phone started ringing. You got to run for governor. I said, I'm not, I'm not running for governor. Mm -hmm. I want nothing to do with governor. It was never on my bucket list. I never had any intention to ever be a politician. I, I really can't stand those, those, these people. They truly are the most corrupt <laughs> Yeah. disingenuous, slimy human beings on the sure. planet. Yeah. And um, they don't, they, they absolutely, you know, lie to you. They don't do what they say. They, they make a bunch of promises they're never going to keep. You know, it's no, and it's, you know, it's actions are louder than words. And so I just, I say that because I got to spend 18 months around, around these people. And I met some nice people, but um, politics is not something I, 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 I really, you know, like that much. I'll just say that. Right. And so, you know, but they asked me to run. And, and people encouraged me to run. So we ran. And, you know, we had an incredible campaign. You know, everybody in this room is aware of it. Stephanie, yep. you played an intimate role. And it wasn't just that it was that, that we had, you know, money or, or this. We had the people. We had a grassroots support that was statewide in every single county. And whereas, you know, my opponent would get heckled at his own events and booed right. and made right. fun of. I mean, and again, he couldn't even announce an event ahead of time. Because people either picketed him or heckled him or whatever. But meanwhile, All your supporters were ours, there. <laughs> I mean, we had a dinner that you did, 300 people at the Ahern on a Tuesday night with 10 days notice. Yeah. Okay. And again, these guys could plan for two months they wouldn't get this. I mean, in fact, they just had, as we were just referencing, Don Jr., the president of the United States' son, came out here. And I've been to Don Jr. events. They're usually a couple thousand people. They had 248 people at this event. A hundred of them were my people. Were your people <laughs> yelling, Joey, <laughs> Joey? And again, a lot of them do love Don Jr. And they wanted to see Don Jr. And so that's, you know, largely why, the, why a lot of them were there. Mm -hmm. uh, but all things considered, all I'm saying is, you know, we've had an amazing campaign yeah. because as I've said from day one, this was never about me. It was about we, we the people. And I really think that that sentiment, you know, really set with people. People looked at me and said, this is a guy, first of all, he's not a politician. Not that a politician. Yeah. He's a fighter, yeah. former fighter, former professional prize fighter. He's a father. He's a businessman. If anybody, we already learned what a businessman can do. Right. Get rid of these corrupt bureaucrats, these career politicians. The only thing they ought to do is serve themselves and enrich themselves. And the only thing they truly care about is maintaining power. Mm -hmm. They will sell out anyone again. And it's not Republicans and Democrats. It's a unit party. There is one party. There is one party of swamp rat establishment corrupt politicians that don't care who's in charge as long as right. they get to keep theirs. And as long as they get to stay in charge. Yeah, yeah, we need to overhaul the whole And thing. we were seeing that. That was being manufactured here in Nevada. Joe Lombardo was being pushed forward by the establishment, by the special interests, because he was the sheriff from Clark County, so he got good name recognition. But unfortunately, what they really didn't do their homework on is nobody likes the guy. And when I say nobody likes him, Mm -hmm. Not a single line person or, or, or a patrol officer, any of the young, anybody at Metro, they can't stand them. But then you mm -hmm. start looking into the Vegas community and you got Route 91 shooting. You got the, the, some of the antics he's pulled in his time. You know, what he did when he first came in as sheriff, you know, the capacity bag, you know, bans on, on magazines, the, the um, issues with red flag laws, the issues with the Bloomberg background check, which is nothing more but a, a backdoor to the federal, a federal gun registry. So we've got the Brady Bill. So here's a guy who really is a, a absolute, you know, um, I would just say it would be reckless to the Republican Party. And they're selling him as a Republican. Now, the reason why I say all this is it's important for people to understand that they set this person up by, you know, the, they, they want the people to be very stupid, right? You know, they, they, 
they try to make uh, us, you know, everyday folks as if we're, as if we're you know, morons. They really do. Yep. The news media, President Trump said it best. They're the enemy of the people. They spoon fed all this nonsense to them on purpose because what they wanted to orchestrate was a Joe Lombardo, Steve Sisolak runoff, which Lombardo would get starched yeah. on. Why? Well, first of all, there's more, more uh, Democrats in the state. Second of all, you know, the issue is they've got a little game that they mm -hmm. play with these mail-in ballots. But when you got someone that's not liked in Vegas and won't get the support in the rural community because the man would be a menace to the Second Amendment. And anybody can agree with me on that. When you're when you when you can't say that you could, uh, you know, constitutional carry, I'm, I'm all for, you know, a training aspect, you know, or something. But bottom line is, when you say you're anti-constitutional carry, when you're for capacity on magazines, when you're for pro red flag laws and you're for Bloomberg background checks, that's that checks out. You know, yeah. you go north of a Reno, yeah. Pershing County, it's a right, even Nye County. Mm -hmm. So you got a guy that can't win. And the reason I bring all this up is so we had this amazing support this grassroots effort. And we were really carrying the people's message, which was that no more mandates, you know, uh, in the three, four things, you know, and I'll have to say five because, you know, we're here in this company. So I'll make sure I say second amendment. But what you hear most across this state is economy tied to mandates, schools that are completely and totally broken. Clark County needs to be split up into five smaller districts. We need to get rid of restorative discipline and we need uh, vouchers. Uh, third, everywhere now is crime also attached to immigration. Mm -hmm. Fourth, depending where you're at, is election integrity. Sometimes that's third, okay? And then fifth would be Second Amendment. And then depending where you're in the state, water. And, and again, these are 70, 75% issues. Independents, nonpartisans, Republicans, and the 30% of the Democrats that haven't lost their minds. So that's really where we're at. And the reason I say all this is because we had this excitement where people said, here's someone that's gonna fight for us and he's not going to just get up and do a little dance and laugh and talk about his record and talk about D.C. or when he was legislator of the year or sheriff here that he's going to get up and say, this is what I've done in the private sector. I know how to win. I know how to fight for people. I've proven by the past 27 months that I'm willing to fight for we the people. All these guys have done is talk. Oh, and by the way, a couple of them have had a chance to represent you. and They didn't do squat. Yeah. You know, so not one time during these mandates did Joe Lombardo show up to the Clark County Commission and say, Maryland. Marilyn, we have the highest suicides per capita in the nation for our children. We have literal war zone on the strip, all right? Literally, you guys remember what was right. going on oh, down there, okay? Yeah. <laughs> unemployment, highest unemployment in the nation, worst schools in the nation, highest increase in drug rate, homicides, crime, I mean, everything's exploding. Yeah. The man never said a word. Nope. Would have, should, could have gone in there when other sheriffs across this state, the sheriff up in Churchill County, the sheriff in Lander County, the sheriff at Elko County. OK, these are the guys that stood up and said in uh, uh, Pershing County, um, uh, Douglas County, even Kenny Furlong and Carson City didn't play the game. All right. And so when you see guys standing up, you got to take here's a guy who's the most powerful you know, position, elected position in southern Nevada, whether he realizes it or not, he should get a little wake up call. Talk to Sheriff Mack. He had an obligation to safeguard our constitutional rights and liberties, and he chose to back a tyrant. And that and that reason alone is why he should fail and would have failed as a candidate for governor as a Republican. Now, I will always say this. Joe should have ran as a, as a liberal, as a liberal Democrat. Yeah. He really should have just said, you know what? I am what I am. Ran right. as a Democrat. As bad as sislax has been, might have been OK, yeah. especially with the gun stuff again. Um, but I'll tell you something. He lost the African-American community and the Latino community when he, you know, when I called him out and hit him with enough uppercuts on his Sanctuary Joe stuff. Yeah. What does he do? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly what we wanted him to do. He comes out with a commercial about how many yeah. people he deported. So he loses the Latino community. He loses the, you know, because it's, it's a touchy subject. You know, no yeah. one's for, we're all for legal immigration, right. yeah, but we know we got to do so. All these things are what really led to this amazing, uh, you know, excitement, passion, uh, motivation and following statewide. And we wrote this thing out. And I'll just tell you, Stephanie, you were a part of this. You saw the excitement. You saw the way people were. I couldn't I can't I still at this point can't pass through an airport, get on a plane, go through a, anywhere without being stopped. And people just wanted a fighter. And so Election Day came. I was up at 345 a.m. I was hitting, I hit uh, eight or nine of the top uh, precincts, it did Facebook Lives, people came out, hugged me, we took pictures. I left here 
very, very confident that this was game over. And it's not because I was cocky or not because I have an ego. It's because I felt like we did the work. We all thought the okay? same thing, too. We were shocked 100%. when we saw the numbers later on. So, Well, you know, and it's like, as we say as a fighter, you know, all the time you, you, you put in the time, you do your homework, you pass the test. That's right. And we took nothing for granted. We worked so hard. And again, I went around the Southwest Circle twice, 63 flights. Right. And I was taking JSX a couple times a week. So when I say we put in uh, an effort, we put in an effort. And then, you know, let's let's drill down on this. So then I leave here on Election Day. I catch an 1150 flight with Andrea. You know, we're at home. We're feeling good. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, with 10 percent of the vote in Clark County, 10 percent of the vote in Clark County counted and zero percent of Washoe County. I have this because I show this to you because a lot of people never got to see this. They call it. They call it. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going, and when they call it, this is what was on the Secretary of State's webpage. Oh, my gosh. I'm leading beating yeah. Lombardo 33.89 to 31.47, and they call it. And I'm going, what's up? And then I have friends that we all know, Mindy Robinson and other people. They're yeah. circling mm -hmm. the results, excuse me, out of Clark County in red and says, you got screwed. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, again, we're, and at that point in time, we were leading in 16 out of 17 counties by a lot. And then slowly, throughout the night and over the next few days, as is always the case, they edged me out even in Washoe County by a few hundred votes. So um, I'll just say this, and then you know, we can move on to some of your other questions. I do not for one second believe that the truthful uh, number of votes cast for Joey Gilbert has been announced to the Nevada, to the public of this state yet. I truly do not believe that we have gotten to the bottom of what really happened over election month, if let's be honest. Yeah. And I'm talking about injects voted, votes injected in and votes injected out, yeah. votes deleted, some that never even made it there. And so we have, you know, requested a recount, which, you know, I know that's one of the reasons you're saying, yeah. Yeah. you know, why am I here? Yeah. I am here today because I absolutely refuse to concede to someone who is so diametrically opposed to everything we stand for as America first core values, um, with a Nevada first driven mission to protect our children, medical freedom, medical privacy, parental rights, Second Amendment, you know, pro-life, all, all those things. You couldn't find someone more further from that than Joe Lombardo. And I do not believe for one second that the people of this state voted him over me. And we asked for a recount. Now, I'll share with you this real quick. I don't expect the recount to provide that much, but we need time right now because we are scrambling there's timeframes to everything. And we have so much information coming in from voting, from early voting, from the actual you know, election day voting that we're trying to get together that I believe that once we have it, we will then uh, immediately within five days of the recount, we will contest the election and then we're off and running. And yeah. I will not quit. I will not end this fight until we fix the elections of the state. It's as simple as that. And I'll tell you this much right now. If once we get done with it, we get done with this, you know, that we contest it. And I, I want an audit. I want a hand. And again, we've got the funding. We've got the resources. We've got the volunteers. No one should have a problem with it because if we don't fix this, we're done in November and we're done forever. Okay. But if we were to go through this, these steps, the audit and the, you know, and again, I want hand counted paper, but I want the paper, but I want to hand count these ballots. These observations that we just paid 200 grand for. It's from me to that table over there through glass again. You can't see anything. That's ridiculous. You can't see anything. They're so just recounting the same thing. The That's same, not going to change fraud. anything. And they need and the audit. And they're pumping them in the same machines that we already know. And again, don't forget, SINSA came out two weeks before the election and did a warning that none of these machines were safe, specifically the D machines. I'm not going to say them because no one wants to get a lawsuit, right. but the, the D machines. And so that all happened here. It's time to challenge it. And there couldn't be a more perfectly situated candidate, albeit I would have loved to have been sitting here with you saying, hey guys, that was awesome. I can't wait to go smash this lack. I want you to know this. My team knew that we were gonna challenge this vote no matter what. So had we been declared the winner by the media and you know, and whoever else has decided to call elections now, we still would have contested the election. We still would have asked for a recount and contested it because we do not believe our elections are fair in this state. I don't think, uh, I, I know almost 90% of Republicans don't. I think it's 40 or 50% of Democrats, right. but people have had it with the selections, not elections. And that's where I step in. Well, I mean, basically you touched on a lot of what I already wanted I to ask you anyway. Um, well, yeah, um, it's one of the reasons why I voted for you because you're you. a smart guy. 
Um, <laughs> and a fighter. Thank you for your vote, Jim. Huh? Thank, you. Thank you for your vote. <laughs> I appreciate that. But um, I guess more than anything, like, can you just explain as much as you can? Because I know you're in the middle of all this uh, going on right now. Uh, what's the what's the process like now? So, you know, the, here's, I mean, here's, where a great, we go here's, here's a great part about it. Um, I don't really know. I know I know that there's certain, you know, procedures and certain things we have to do, which we're doing. Right. But um, we eventually I want to end up in front of a judge. I want a jury. I want a jury trial. I want to put this in front of 12 Nevadans. I think I put this in front of I don't think there's any way to lose. I bet everything I have on it. Yeah. You know, it's it's that clean cut. It's that clear. It's that convincing that we have corrupted elections here and that Joe Lombardo did not win and Steve Sislak did not get 100,000 votes, more like 50, right. 55,000, okay? And Joe Lombardo more in the, in the, at least in the Clark County, not above 30,000. But there, again, until we get to the bottom of this, and so by any means necessary, what we have to do is we have to do the contest and then however, whatever it takes to get in front of a judge and jury, I want it, like I said, I want that jury trial and to put on this evidence. And then again, we've got the corrupt media so this is going to be the last time I'm here because we're going to have to use every single, you know, you know, outlet that we can right. to get this information. But I will say this. I do believe in, in Stephanie, you know, we've we've talked about this and I know you've, you agree that we've reached a point in this state and in this country where people are done. Like you, you how many times do you hear I'm not going to vote? My vote doesn't count. Yep. You know, and then they see something like this go on. So I really do think we're at that point in Nevada where people are saying like, OK, hold on a second. This guy, and I'm talking about Sislak now for a second, this moron destroyed the state, yeah. locked our kids out of their school for a year and a half, okay, shut their, canceled their sports. How do you explain to little Timmy, who needs that sophomore senior year of ball or hooping to get to that D1 school, right. that he can't play, it's too dangerous, but you got the friggin' Raiders playing, you got UNLV playing basketball, baseball, football, Nevada, University of Nevada. I mean, how? Summer League was here. Okay. Just insanity. This and the man. And risk for kids. And the risk for kids. Nothing. So a statistical zero per our CDC. And yeah. for those of you that don't know, I did, I did leave out one title of boxer, lawyer, father. I am the chairman of the board of America's Frontline Doctors. So I happen to probably be, and I have no problem saying this, and this might sound a little cocky, the smartest guy on the coronavirus in the state. Definitely smarter than anybody that sat on the governor's task force or anybody that's worked in it. We are the smartest on this. And so I'm very excited about that because all this stuff that happened would have never been handled that way. I'm the Ron DeSantis of the West, but I'm DeSantis 10.0. We never would have shut a day. We never would have closed a business, a school, a sport, a church. I would have said, hey, you know what? You want to shut your business, shut your business. You want to wear a mask, wear a mask. You want to get the Fauci out, you get the Fauci out. Now, I don't recommend it, right? Yeah. but if you want to, that's yours. And I, and I would do my best to provide them extreme informed consent to try and convince them otherwise. Yeah. But that all being said, this is America. We that's don't right. do mandates. And so the bottom line is this. We have to follow the system. We're going to go into the courts. Hopefully we're going to get all we're looking for is a God-fearing, honest judge. Because I'm telling you, what, what we with what we have, due to the fantastic volunteers and supporters and people that showed up across this state, I believe we have everything necessary to fix this state's elections once and for all, actually. Yeah. Can That's, you talk about specific evidence yet? Or you I, mean, I mean, we could, so there are a lot of this stuff I put on my, um, my Facebook because I said, these are like the nine things that are, so first of all, I don't believe this election should have ever been certified. I, in fact, as an attorney, I don't know how it could be certified. So the same little nonsense NRS laws they use to tell us that we can only be in these observation centers at this level and we can't have our phone out and we can't do this. Those are the same NRSs that govern the election. Yeah. So where's chain of custody? Where's the secrecy of the ballot? Your name, your precinct information, your, your, your uh, political parties on there, all of it's on there. Okay, so right. people could do whatever they want with those. <laughs> on top of that, so the secret ballots destroyed, so number one, number two, no chain of custody. We have videos, pictures, data on where we have, you know, basically, uh, what would you call it? You know, um, declarations from folks that just admit that they work for the elections department, that they're not. There's two Democrats working there together, carrying in a box of USB drives. OK, um, carrying in ballots. All right. Or, or the late nights. We've got video pictures, you know, all kinds of, of data 
of people pulling, I mean, vans, Penske vans pulling in with out, out of state plates and one person getting out carrying in boxes of ballots. Incredible. Carrying in a trays of USB drives. And so let me just share with you this. In the, in the legal world, the attorney world, chain of custody, you lose that chain of custody for, from here to here, it's out. It's out. It's gone. There's, there's, you don't get to pass here. Right. If somewhere between here and here, you lost chain of custody, you don't ever get, it stops right here, dead in the water. Yeah. How they can get away with no chain of custody on these ballots that they brought in from all over the place. One person driving in a van. Some of them, we've got testimony where people took them home, took the oh ballots home. God. Okay, so again, oh, wow. it's when, when the stuff gets out. So you've got the secrecy of the ballot. You've got the chain of custody of the ballot. We have the assistant registrar of voters on video in Reno admitting, number one, that they started counting their early voting a week early with no observation. Right, I remember you saying that. All of those, I'm sorry, are out. Yeah. Gone. And I have, and by the way, I'm so confident in how I did. I have no problem. We could throw out every ballot tomorrow, do a brand new election, and it'll probably be even more than what it was. Because right. now people are really going, oh my God, I thought I had to wait till I could vote for him in the general. And they're realizing what happened and they know they got Syslot 2.0. So you've got the chain of custody. You've got the secrecy of the ballot gone. You've got a lady admitting on camera that they started counting the early voting a week early with no observers. The next thing you've got is the same person admitting that the machines are connected to MiFi, like we're right. like we're morons. Right. It's the internet mm -hmm. connected to all EMS machines. All right. And Sinsa, just two weeks ago, two weeks before the election, excuse me, releases things saying all of these machines are vulnerable and until they're updated, should not be used. Okay. The business bad. They, they, nothing was done to these things. But they used them. Anyway. They used them anyway. And so again. Yeah. And then, and then let's go to the next level. 44,000 non, you know, independent nonpartisans were unable to vote because of an error at the DMV. An error? When they know that every, this is common knowledge, Rasmussen polling, uh, they're breaking, independents, nonpartisan Democrats are breaking four, five, and six to one to the Republican Party right now. And taking another step further, they're breaking even harder to those America first core values parental rights, medical freedom, medical privacy, folks. Um, this guy right here. Right, right. So when you got 44,000 voters that we know about, because imagine this, now Stephanie, if they're gonna tell us it's 44, we, it's gotta be 84 we, yeah, or 100. Probably Come on, double it. just yeah, like everything least, here. Yeah. So, so then we got the 44,000. And so that, these, are, these are big, big issues. And then like the last two little ones, but they're not little because they're in the NRS, they have to have equal representation. So throughout the, the, this entire process, we've got documentation where, again, these people out themselves, that's what I was trying to say earlier, they're out there saying, oh, yeah, no, we're, it's just her and I. We're two Democrat observers in this room. By, they're in an adjudication room by themselves. Oh my gosh. It's, it's absolute oh my insanity. Gosh. Oh, the last thing I almost forgot. Zero to none um, uh, uh, signature verification. Zero to none, meaning we've got them on camera. Yeah. It comes in, scan it and throw it to the side. They didn't open up and look at the anything. Just zip, throw, zip, throw. I mean, there's thousands of those. Every one of those is gone. Gone. It's incredible. You know, I mean, and again, like I said, there should be this election in, in Ann. Uh, they took great lengths to go to both the Clark County Commission and the Washoe County Commission and put all the commissioners on notice that this election was uncertifiable, that there was too many, you know, uh, you know irreparable, you know, like I said, you know, damage to these things, as I did with the example with the chain of custody, you cannot recover from that. When you have no signature, signature verification, you cannot recover. When you've got bat, I mean, uh, bins of USB uh, device, I mean, USB, you know, devices showing up, and there's there's no no record of who where they came from. Anybody, I mean, imagine that. I mean, and then take for example, I'm watching them take. I think they're five thousand ballots at a time. These huge boxes, and they're sent down. So you want to throw, so these guys are driving around in vans. What's to say they didn't stop or we just, we hear all these things stop at a nonprofit or wherever they are. And in Nevada, right. where ballot trafficking is 100% legal, yeah. ballot yeah. harvesting. <laughs> so they're counting the early votes early, which they just admitted to without observers. So now they know what this is. So now they just got to tell people we need X amount of ballots to bring in for, for, for whoever it is, for Mr. Sislak or someone. So they can call me a conspiracy theorist all we want. This is all now becoming common knowledge. And again, it's perfectly legal in the state, meaning they're doing it. Yeah. 
and they don't and they don't hide it. The Democrats do not hide or be bashful about the fact that they are 100 percent ballot harvesting. I just think the Republicans are, are, are you know, behind the times. And until we can defeat it, they got to get with it. Yeah. That's the only problem is they think, oh, no, we're going to be fine. No, you're not going to be fine. So that's what's really happening here is we have a total breakdown of the election process here. It was not followed. The rules weren't followed. The procedures weren't followed. The pre- and again, we're in a military company here. STPs. OK, or SOPs, standard, standard operating procedures. You've got to stick to these. There's no it's a checklist. You know, this is a check. You can't you can't you, you got to do it like this. And they didn't do it. Matter of fact, there's nine or ten steps that just were circumvented. So we're just in a very unique place where um, this information has to be presented, in my opinion, to the public and in front of a jury. OK. I have a couple of questions for you. So back in the 2020 election with all what we know went on, all of the lawsuits that were filed and all of those answers that came back and they said, you have no standing. And a lot of people that I talked to, they said, why were those thrown out? Can you explain to everybody what that means and why did they say there's no standing? Because people equate that to there's no evidence and yeah. they couldn't build this case because you didn't have standing and all this. So can you explain that? I mean, I, I can do the best because, listen, there's just there was just so much shenanigans in mm-hmm. tomfoolery going on. And I, and I hate to say this, even on even on the, you know, at the uh, at the, the justice level, even in the in that in the judicial branch, um, too much legislation from the branch. Trump was hated. It was a means to an end. Um, there's there was definitely evidence available. Now, I will say this. There were circumstances, many across the country, where they said you waited too long. You should you, you, the the proper time was to bring this before. But how could you know? And so, so there were some technical, big time technical issues. Also, in this state, I happen to think that it was absolutely ridiculous in 2020 to wait for the primaries to go through and then not challenge stuff until after the the election in November. I would have been, which is exactly why we are we're at today. I have standing. I was going to say, I are they going to say that to you? No, they're not. Okay, and so. As soon as you concede, you don't have standing. Not the same level. I am refusing to concede because this is something that directly impacted me and affected my opportunity to be Nevada's you know, 31st governor. And so the bottom line is I have standing, I have the resources, I have the data, and I have the evidence that I think is going to shock some people's conscience. So all these people, I've talked to people on both sides of the aisle. In fact, right before I came here, and I won't say his name, but he was a candidate in uh, one of the races here. And people say, there's no evidence. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you say to people? that They don't believe there's evidence in 2020. They don't believe there's evidence here and that you're somehow making this up. What do you say I, to those people? You know what? Um, because of my work with America's Frontline Doctors, for the first year, I was, you know, the lion that was protecting the sheep. And the last year, after everything being out there, if you can't read and think for yourself and you believe this nonsense, I'm done looking for sheep to protect. I'm looking, I'm hunting with other lions and I'm just done with these guys. These guys are completely out of their mind. They can't open their eyes. You know, I have no time for them. For you to say that there are no shenanigans in this thing, come read our election integrity reports. Go listen to, go talk to anybody that was at any precinct and the stuff they saw. Oh, I remember, I forgot one thing I told you. So people would come in And they would call out their party affiliation, Republican, and they'd send them to one or two machines on the other side of the room. Mm -hmm. And the independents and non-partisans, I mean, Democrats and non-partisans were sent to other machines. Okay, so tell me how that's going on. Yeah. All right. And then then on one of our election integrity reports that we have, because we have some really fantastic ladies there, she was there all day recording all this. And at some point in time, this particular machine that was only being used for Republican voters Mm -hmm. malfunctioned. They came out and you know, dismantled it. No one knows what the heck happened with the votes. There's no record. There's no anything saying something. They bring another one in. It's just, you couldn't come. You I mean, you can't make this stuff up. So to the people that say that, you know, and I won't even get into like the, the 2000 mule stuff, you know, you, you've got to be more, I guess, open to taking a, a wider view of, listen, do you really think president Joe Biden who is really just an installed puppet, got 80 million votes. Do you really think, is that the most popular president? I mean, just use your common sense. The guy can't get anybody to show up anywhere. 
and much like our our friend, uh, you know, uh, um, Joe. So it, it's just again, I, I have no I have no time for those people when they say there's nothing uh, and there's no evidence. I just laugh. I actually feel sorry for them because all you got to do is get get on the computer, you know, get on the Wayback Machine, check it out. You'll find it, yeah. and it's everywhere. This this entire and in this state to say that in Nevada, I'd like to know who that is and take him outside, and give him a couple cracks, right? Because he needs a wake up call. In this state, where we're raked last in the nation for election integrity, where it just took three weeks in 2020 to count the election, and now here we are, we got election month. When I moved here from Chicago in the fourth grade, I remember election night was about 10 o'clock. It was over. It was done. Maybe 11. We all was done. So now let's fast forward 30, 35 years, and we've gone back. Now we now we need six weeks. Doesn't make any sense. How do you do this? You go back to precinct level voting. Precinct level, you have only precincts, and the only people working those elections must live in that precinct. precinct. And we'll have more volunteers, and you know what? Two hours after the polls close, you'll have your results. It's that simple. So uh, to those people, I say, you know what? Uh, You're absolutely lost, clueless, but I'd still love to talk to him. Well, he did say that if the evidence comes out and he sees it, he will retract everything he said. Oh, gosh. Well, I'm well, so at glad. Least, at least he's willing to go that far. Yeah. Because here's something that frustrates me, too, is when I was talking to people about all the stuff that was going on with the Trump election, the stuff that's going on with you with this primary. And when I get this response, it absolutely just floors me as somebody who's been involved in politics for a long time. Not a politician, but interested in politics. They all cheat. Mm -hmm. So who cares? Okay, so uh, Lombardo out cheated Joey. And or vice versa. Like, okay, well, Biden out cheated Trump. Trump cheated Hillary. So it's all fair now. So let me just (laughs) let me just jump in and say this right now. Our country is in a disaster right now. We are in the worst shape we've ever been. Highest inflation in 40 years. Um, we're having an energy crisis. We're about to have a, a you know, a, a, a gasoline, diesel crisis. Um, we've got the worst schools in the nation here in Nevada. Uh, United States schools are ranked 40th or 50th in the nation now. Now, for the first time ever, the place to send your kids to college is China. Okay, this is how bad it's getting. So what these people are not realizing is that when you don't have accountability with your elected representatives, this is what happens. When they did what they did in Venezuela, which is the same exact things with the same exact machines, and then they took the guns, then they destroyed the economy, and in 12 years, Venezuela went from the second or third most prosperous you know, country uh, in, the, in South America to, I don't know, it's for where it ranks in the world now. So it's, it's, abs- it's absolutely critical that we have fair and free elections. If we can't remove these people that aren't serving us, as it, as it says in our constitution, when, when these guys no longer represent our interests, when they're no longer looking out for our best interests, it is our duty to remove them. Now, listen, you can interpret that any way you right, want, right. Yeah. but what I'm trying to say is your, your duty should be that you should be able to go to the voting box and say, this clown didn't do anything for us in 2020 or 2021. And this person was there and we should be able to say, well, they're out. And you're not able to do that. And to, so I say to people, listen, just like if you know how I flip it on them. So, okay, so you own a business. You got a guy you find out stealing from you and he's not doing the work. You're going to keep him and right. just let him hang out. You're going to fire him. I'm going to fire him. So, okay. So we got a couple of those right now. Yeah. We got to fire him. We got to fire him. And so the most important part about um, the election process is that if we have, if we fix our elections, we fix everything. It truly is the missing thing to everything. Schools, economy, crime, immigration, water. Put the right people in place. Get rid of these corrupt career politicians and scumbags. And let's let's get it done. Now, it's not just you, right? Aren't there about 10 candidates? There's going to be 17 total. 17 that are contesting their Well, results. there's so they hit you with some. So this cost me 200 grand. Right. Um, and again, I'm very fortunate to have people to put, put stuff up. So it costs the, the individual 200 grand. And they would have done that same pricing structure for everybody. So it could have got really expensive. So we picked me and, you know, and again, we're still going to have people on board contesting with us, but there are at least 17, maybe 20 people. And again, if you looked at some of the school board races down here or up in Reno, mm-hmm. right? When you've got folks that never 
opened a website, never created a website, never knocked a door, never put any literature together, never went to an event, never addressed a crowd. And they beat or are beating people that not only did they have money behind them, but we had we had a brigade of walkers and workers, door knockers, you know, phone bankers, events, these people. And again, on election night, all crushing it. And then slowly but surely over the week, it just they just dwindle down. And, and that's exactly what's going to happen in November. Yeah. Well, one of the things uh, I wanted to uh, just say real quick is how much uh, I really uh, respected your campaign a great deal because I uh, when you filed your first CNE report and I was comparing it with Lombardo and I'm like rolling my eyes going, where is and I'm, uh, I'm going through because I want to know how in the world this guy raises $10 million because I know it was just about three. Yeah. He, it was kind of weird, but, um, but watching, uh, I first met you in Reno at the state party convention and, right. and, uh, or I mean, not Reno, Winnemucca and, uh, talked to you for, uh, talked to you for a little bit when I was up there. One thing I, I, I really liked was, uh, the amount of passion, that, that you got and like it was it was kind of a everybody just expected it to be a foregone conclusion that like oh well you know of course Lombardo is going to win yeah and I'm like because I it was confusing me too because I thought he was going to run a primary against Steve I didn't think he'd run as a Republican but I just really uh, I really appreciate anybody who uh, runs for office that takes it as seriously as you do and um, I, I really wish you the best in this because if nothing else, and I hope you, and I hope you come out on top in the whole deal, obviously. But if nothing else, at least having somebody that with the smarts and the people behind them that can expose some of this stuff, because this isn't just a Republican thing. This is what I tell people all the time. It's a Democrat thing too. Like if you can't trust. You can't trust uh, that when the person you vote for, your vote is going to be counted correctly, then you can't hold people accountable. And you do get the mess that we have. Right. It's now. an American problem. Yeah, it is. So, it's an American problem. What do you say to future candidates that want to run? Because I've heard uh, candidates now say if if you're not the chosen one by the state party, then you're never going to win. So, I mean, that's, you know, that that's that's true. Um, but, you know, we've got to fix these elections. It's 100 percent true. I'm going to prove that it's true. I'm going to when I release these numbers, when this stuff comes out in court and they see what really happened, it's true. You know, they did everything they could. The executive committee uh, in the Nevada GOP had picked their guy. And, and again, you know, when they, they're going to have to face this. Listen, this is not my problem. This is their problem. now. They they pushed a guy to the front that had no business being in the front. No business. Again, it was just it was just dumb. At the end of the day, it was just absolutely mindless drivel coming out of their mouths when they really didn't look around and say, OK, hold on a second. So with what we've just been through as a country and as a state, who's the best? Who's our best chance? And again, they wanted they, for some reason, they think I thought a moderate was it. No, not with what we're seeing, what we've seen. People wanted someone that was going to act and that was going to fight for them and that was going to be there to get their backs. We the people's backs. That was clear as day. And so, I, again, um, I tell people this. Don't don't let it shy you away from getting involved. As General Flynn says, you know, local involvement, national impact. So whether you want to run for office or not, or whether you want to start showing up to the school board meetings, the county commissioner meetings, holding them accountable, asking them tough questions, getting involved, volunteering, getting involved in your schools, your kids school. We need parents more involved. We need the community more involved. We need everybody and everyone that thinks that they don't make a difference or can't make a difference. That is not true. Every single person watching this, wherever you are, doesn't matter who you are, get involved and you will make a difference. And that's how we fix this country. And I tell people this, we take this country back one county, one city council and one school board at a time. And if we do that, if we work with that in mind, we will eventually get these people out. And then again, everyone who anyone who wants to run will be able to run and that'll be bearing their merit, how hard they worked, how many people they got in front of. And that's how it should be. It shouldn't be that there's somebody in the back room deciding, selecting who gets to be our, our, our next you know, public servant. And then, oh, guess what? They're going to do nothing for us. Yeah. Do you have a message for Joe? 
Yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. Drop, drop out. You didn't win. You know, it's very simple. You did not win this election, not by a long shot. You know you didn't. You were a terrible candidate. You're a terrible person, and you would be a terrible governor. So do us all a favor. Get out before Sisolak starches you, and let me give him the, give him the political beating he deserves and get this state back on track. That's simple. I think it's so, another reason why I like him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Directly to the point. Doesn't sugarcoat. <laughs> yeah. I think we, most- do, we, need, we need more of that, trust me. Most people at this point don't want the establishment, the established politician and all. That's what was refreshing about you. And a lot of these other candidates that ran in the primary, a lot of them, they'd never run for anything before. And people gravitated towards that. Yeah, you know, it was was funny, too, is, you know, and I'm glad you brought this up earlier when you said, you know, I was prepared. You know, no one took this opportunity more seriously than I did. When I saw all these guys before the debates and stuff and they're, they're out all, you know, grab ass and, and playing around and whatever, I was in the back reviewing my notes. I was in the bathroom giving myself a little, you know, running through my stuff. I was standing outside with Andrea, you know, on the back, you know, going through stuff. I was having people quiz me. I was prepping. No one was more prepared or had more information upstairs on how to solve the problems of the state than I did. And that's what scared them because they don't want someone that's gonna come in and do what they say they're gonna do. They don't want someone that's gonna come in and solve problems. They want someone to come in and say all this nonsense and do nothing. Leave the pro- leave it alone. Let, let everyone make their money. Nothing happens. The middle class gets crushed. The rich get richer. The poor get poorer. Those with addiction don't get the help they need. And we don't have an unemployment problem in the state. We have an unemployable problem, all right? We need job training. We need you know, you know, you know, transitional housing. We need so much that these guys don't care about because they don't care about the people. So I think what was really great was that we prepared and over-prepared so that we could deliver so that when they asked me, and I got screwed in that debate because Guy Nora bullied his way in. It was supposed to be two minutes with one minute rebuttals. And once he gained, he went to one minute and 30 seconds. But had I had two minutes to talk about each subject that they brought up, mm-hmm. it would we would have walked out of there and people would have said, that's a wrap. That's yeah. it. Because we were so prepared and again, that's all. That's what I bring to everything I, I'm involved with. And when we get through this, whether it's I will be governor of the state. Let me just say this. So I hate to rain on your parade, Joe. I'll either primary <laughs> primary in 2026, or 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 I'll be running against whoever you know, you know, was going to try and replace this like. But we will be governor at some point, and that's what you'll get from me. I mean, I'm coming here to go to work for the people and do the best job for Nevadans. Yeah. Okay. I don't have any more questions unless you do. Do you stuff. have anything else that you want to? Tell the folks. Yeah, just if you just want to, yeah, Mark, you know, Mark will uh, close in on you. You know, you know what? I, I would just say this. I just want to say thank you to everybody in this state that's played a played a role here. You know, I'm so humbled and so honored to have your support, your trust. You know, the mama bears that got behind me early, the, the health freedom community, law enforcement, Leo's the veterans, everybody that said, you know what? This guy is standing for us. And I would just say more than anything, just, just thank you. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for giving me your trust. And, 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 and thank you for, you know, for believing in America. Thank you for believing in the greatest country on earth uh, and this constitutional republic. Keep loving her as much as she loves you and get in the fight with us. Because if we work together, we will take this country back. And can you give your website address? Because he's still, oh, we still need donations yeah, and support you know, from everybody. So this is a fight. And as you guys heard, it's an expensive fight. Um, anything anybody can do to help. And again, I'm glad you brought up the donations because I got through. I had more 25, 27, $17 and 76 donations than anybody and it powered the machine. And so I would just say this, go on Gilbert for governor. We have not conceded. We are still in the fight. We have not conceded. Go to Gilbert for governor. And I'll, I'll share with you one exciting thing, taking a little play out of the general's playbook. General Flynn now has the America Project. Well, I am just now in the process of launching the Nevada Integrity Project. And the Nevada Integrity Project is going to focus on election integrity in this state and holding our elected officials accountable. So that's coming. And But until then, go to Gilbert for Governor, check us out on Facebook and just, you know what, hit the share button, share, share, share. If you see something from me, keep this movement going, keep it alive because we'll fix this state together. Okay. Well, Joey, I want to thank you very much for coming. Absolutely. I know you're a very busy man, but it's, it's, a, uh, I, I, it's a great thing you're doing for the state. It really is because it's it's bigger than just you. The state n- needs to be fixed. We need to protect our beautiful children. We got to fix these schools. We got to end this, you know, sex trafficking and everything that's happening here. And we will do it as, as long as we can work together and get rid of these people. We'll do it. That's right. Okay, Joey. If you don't have anything else, uh, 
This is uh, Jim Jonas and Stephanie Phillips with another episode of Veterans in Politics. Until next time.